I'm live. Okay, ready. I'm whispering because it's live. Okay. <laughs> Positioning. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome to Watercolor Happy Hour, our weekly show where we share with you how to make a delicious cocktail and also how to paint it with watercolors. I'm Volta, the artist behind Color Snack, and this is my husband, Dan. He will be making the cocktail as per usual. Um, so yeah, Dan, I'm, I'm excited about today's cocktail. It's, it's a very peach forward cocktail. Uh, hopefully um, you guys are enjoying in, in the peach season. Peach season um, started, it's time for peach pie. Yes, peach pie, peach everything, all the things. Peach cocktails, <laughs> oh, delicious peaches, and Volta just got a big old shipment of some sort of peach truck. Thing. Oh yes. Uh, it, oh, okay. I do recommend you buy local peaches, <laughs> but also if you have the opportunity to have a big shipment of peaches delivered to you from, say, like Tennessee, um, you should totally do that too. <laughs> Tennessee peaches. No, yeah. So these Georgia are these peaches. are these are not not even Texas peaches. Uh, that's um, why they're not cling stone. Okay. I don't know what that means, but basically they are still delicious peaches and it's really cool because for like, I think, I want to say like $30, you get like a big box of peaches and we, we went in with a couple of friends, so we have like a lot of peaches, hence yes. the cocktail today. <laughs> Look at all these people. Hi, Hello everyone. everybody. Thanks for Welcome. your comments. <laughs> yeah. So, so just, just. Dan, random fact of the day, there's two broad types of peaches. There's a uh, cling stone, and then I guess it's called loose stone. I don't know the other one, but oh. if you've opened up a peach, like you know how some of them you can just like peel open and it'll just split and the pit will just kind of drop out. Mm -hmm. Those are the opposite of cling stone. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, so is that like a Georgia it. peach? Uh, I believe most Georgia peaches are that loose stone most of the peaches you find in texas tend to be clingstone okay. um, clingstone are usually more robust they're a little easier to grow handle changes in weather but they're also not good they taste kind of like an apple in my mind like, like the texture is is oh, less sweet yes those are like juicy. these are like hairy a little hairy. Yeah, the fuzzy, the, sweeter, mean, softer ones. But the ones. other ones, not hairy, fuzzy is yes, a better word. fuzzy, hairy peaches. But like the other ones are like, uh, like app, they have like an apple skin. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the, the meat itself. Oh, okay. The texture. So see There's how these are just nice there. and soft? Yeah. And they're really juicy and you bite into them and everything goes down your yeah, face. Yeah. Those are not clingstone. Clingstone okay. are the ones where you that are like crisp. So are you like, happy with these peaches? I am happy with okay, these. Okay, well these peaches are saying. from Tennessee, but yours don't have to be. <laughs> I took the long way around to get to the point. These are good and juicy peaches. And if you're following this recipe and you happen to have clingstone, you'll be able to tell because you won't be able to pull um, it out. Uh, use two of them and add a little more syrup because mm -hmm. they won't be as juicy and they won't be as sweet. Oh, let's see. Uh, Yolanda got some peaches from Costco. Um, I'm guessing like Costco probably have local local peaches. Yeah, uh, good ones. I mean, they're hairy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're good ones. Yeah. Ham's Orchard in Terrell, Texas. Uh, right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, and then Paul said he had a peach shake the other day from Chick-fil-A. Oh my God, that sounds really good. I know, I would a love peach. a good peach shake. Wow, okay. Oh man, that's one. You're you're a big fan of, uh, of of Jenny's. I don't even think they do milkshakes there. No, that's interesting. That's interesting why, I wonder why. I couldn't imagine though, as, as decadent as that oh, ice cream yeah, is. Oh yeah, it'd be like 1,100 calories. Yeah, it would be. 100,000, yeah. <laughs> not it just 1,000. <laughs> One one thousand hundred hundred thousand all of them, but yeah. See how I was able to just pop that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And this this is an easy recipe yeah, show, too. Show in the in the other cam. Right there. <laughs> yes, I just threw. Oh, that's what you wanted me to yeah, do. Yeah, show like how clean. Oh yeah, I can do that. The partition wow, was. Yeah. Look at that. Popped right out. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm not. I'm not a very good cameraman. I guess. Not an entertainer, but all right. So what you saw me do was just split that peach in half, and then I'm going to pull the pit out of the other side, and we're going to have something 
for our garnish in just a bit. I'm going to leave that rough stuff in uh, because it'll help the peach hold together. A also, bit. it's pretty, and I have that in my watercolor painting. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Oh, so that's a our... perfect slice. Wow, look at look that. Look at that glorious slice. This is slice. like an iconic, like when you think of a peach slice, this is it. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that you appreciate these things. So, all right. So we dropped a half a peach in there. We're going to stick a good thing of basil because this thing's going to muddle. This is a basil peach mezcal. Oh, tasty. Stuff. Oh my gosh. Hi, Angie. Shout out to Angie because it was thanks to her that I found out about the peach truck from Tennessee. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you, so Angie. thank you, Angie. Last year was when uh, it was the first time we got the peaches, and this year we did it again because it's, it's like so fun to have a lot of peaches all at once. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Angie. I'm, I've been enjoying them, if nothing else. All right. So, with that, you saw me pour uh, roughly three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. These are pretty sweet, but we also are putting a fairly strong mezcal into it. So we want it to sweeten up. Uh, you'll see uh, a lot of recipes that use mezcal or tequila using agave syrup. I don't like to do that that often, especially when you want something to be peach and herb forward and have everything else in it. It just kind of like agave just kind of overwhelms everything mm. in my opinion. There's a place for it, like in something like a, just a basic lime margarita. But we don't want to be basic. No, we do not want to be basic. And we want to <laughs> taste peach. And we yeah. want to taste smoky mezcal. Yes. So we just muddle in that peach. We saw I didn't even have to make a syrup. Just squish, squish, squish yeah. with the basil. I love, I love cocktails like that where, like, I know it's, it's like, it's not hard to make a syrup, but when you don't have to, it's like so much better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and now we're going to take Mezcal. I'm using Mezcal uh, uh, Vago, their Elote version. Uh, I love this Mezcal. Again, they you'll see different labels on it. The new label is not as good, but the stuff inside it is the same. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, if you see the, the cool branding like this, grab one because it's not going to be around for long. I really like this brand. Yeah, it's really the, like... The new one looks nothing like it. <laughs> Uh, I, I love, comforting. <laughs> yes, I, I love, I love a bottle that is just like confident in what it is. Yeah. Like don't mess around. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be frou-frou on your stuff. Like just respect what's in it. Yeah. Boom. I mean, like if someone were to put a watercolor illustration on this bottle, <laughs> it would only enhance it, but I understand what you're yes, saying. Yes, particularly if it was one from Color Snack. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Episode is sponsored by Color Snap. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we put an ounce and a half of mezcal in it, and we're going to do half an ounce of Amaro Nanino. If you don't have Amaro Nanino, you can use any other orange forward liqueur. Like uh, Triple Sec, Cointreau, Grand Marnier, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dry Curacao, any of those that are orangey. Mm -hmm. But I like Amaro Nanino and mezcal and lemon combo peach and lemon combo just because this has kind of more of an herby note to it and it's a little less sweet but to each their own but we're only using half let's see anyway. angie said she uses agave in her chia seed pudding there you go oh that's a great idea i love chia seed puddings i feel like we should make a chia seed cocktail sometime volta volta does like your chia seeds yeah they're they're so tasty Okay. <laughs> Colors not mezcal. <laughs> Paul yes. said peach hero. Peach hero. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not using super juice this time because I ran out and mm. I you really, ran out of super juice. I really wanted to have like a whole episode on making it, but I got caught up in a project and yeah. I was working. It's okay next time. Sometime soon yeah. we'll do the freaking super juice episode. We'll do it next week because uh the cocktail slash slushy type of thing. It's going to be like a snow cone kind of situation. It's going to be very simple. Ah, so you okay. can talk about super juice next week. 
So you guys be sure to tune in because Super Juice will save you when you're <laughs> out of lemons. Yeah, but when you're out place. of Super Juice, lemons will save you. Yeah. So it like, works both ways. Look at this. I just I just used half a lemon for half an ounce. If I had used this lemon for Super Juice, I would have like six ounces. Oh, wow. Six ounces. And I have so much lemon. It's so like, zero waste. It's like five think. ounces more than what you have. I know. I know. Yeah. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Juice. Da, 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 da. There's all my things. Now I'm just gonna pour the water off of that ice that has been sitting there for a while. So we don't water down our cocktail. Pour it in the shaker, two taps. And we're gonna give this one a really good hard shake because it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of like, heat in there and we wanna break it out. And we do wanna water that down a bit with cold ice. Otherwise it's not gonna pour out. So yeah, we're just shaking it up. Really good. These are good cocktails to make at home. Don't order these types of things at the bar if it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be waiting forever. No, it's not a difficult cocktail though. Yeah, it is. Well, it was. Not, it's, it's difficult to make. But it's got fast. just a few ingredients. Yeah, but it, it takes time to make. What uh, I'm saying is that if you're at a bar, and it's busy. You don't order a cocktail like this because oh. it takes forever. Well, do you want to explain why this cocktail is coach called, called called Peach Paper Plane? Oh yeah, speaking of bars, yeah, Peach Paper Plane. So yeah, it's a, it is a riff off of the Paper Plane cocktail, which is a whiskey amaran and you know, uh, lemon and syrup. Oh yeah, it you is, wanna you wanna? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where are you at? Where are you at camera? Oh, right I'm just here. moving it around below. Right. It. Got to frame the shot. There here. we go. Yes. All right. There we go. Yes. And then we pour. Hey, it's not orange. I guess I didn't use as much nonino, or maybe the peach wasn't as oh. as colorful. Whoopsie. The one he made last time was very much. I think the, <laughs> the peach. The peach was a little riper. Maybe. Uh, but. Hey. No, oh, but yes, uh, a paper plane is an excellent cocktail, fast to make at a bar, and it's one of those uh, those bartender handshake type of cocktails where uh, if you go to a pretentious cocktail place, they probably have their own variation of a paper plane, and they'll, they'll look at you and be like, yeah, this guy knows his cocktails. Yeah. So paper plane is the secret word. Paper plane is the secret word. No. The last word is the secret word. There we go. And now just to add a little flavor to it, I'm going to roast this guy. Not necessary, but it's really fun if you just uh, take your peach into the flames. It'll like just infuse it with like beautiful aroma. So definitely uh, fun nice and smoky. to do. This cow's already smoky, so why not add yeah. a little more smoke? So can I try it while you're doing that? Yeah, sure thing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try it. Oh, that's so good. I mean, it doesn't look orange like I thought it would. It's more yellow, um, but that's okay. I mean, the flavor profile is still there, Dan. So I think it was probably the peach that we used previously was more ripe, so the color was uh, not like orange juice. <laughs> but, but it's very, it's very like well balanced, I would say. Um, it's got notes of, of peach, of course, and then this cow. Yes. And yeah, then some other, of... and then some other cocktail words um, <laughs> to go along with those. It should be. <laughs> so there you have it. Okay. No, there should be a, there should be a be some smoke and some it's agave. Smoky. Mm -hmm. No agave. No agave. Okay. No, we didn't use agave. Well, no, the agave is in mezcal. Oh. Smoky mezcal with a hint of it. Okay. Mm. Oh, let me try it with the peach inside. There you go. Yeah. That adds. Because the that peach, adds to the smoke. Yeah, it's like it smells like a peach cobbler pie or something. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so good. Yeah. Oh, I also forgot one important detail of making yeah. it. It doesn't change the taste, oh. 
but uh, you're supposed to double strain this one. I didn't have my second strainer. Oh, out. I actually don't mind it. Like, yeah, some people yeah. can. You can see this like peach goop on top of it. Pulp. That's why you double strain. Yeah, it's pulp. Yeah, it's peach fine. pulp. Yeah, it's peach pulp, but it looks a little gross. No, it doesn't. It looks fine. It doesn't look clean and pristine. Yeah, but it I, is I, a... David, I will paint it orange because you know that's what I committed to um, mm. prior to this. Yes. <laughs> that is good though. Yeah. All it's, right. It's delicious. See somebody commenting peach pudding. I like peach pudding. Oh, let's make some peach, peach pudding. Slurry. Made it orange. Yes, peachy. Awesome. All right. Can you add me to and the yes, stream? Yes, we do. Uh, oh yeah. Didn't think. Some comments on our jazz. Thank you, Paul. Yes, you can see our playlist on a uh, YouTube music, right? Yeah, it's called Watercolor Happy Hour. Watercolor Happy Hour. We we try to update it regularly with whatever fun jazz. No, that is not the one that I want. I want to add this to stream. That becomes primary. Then I switch to... I remove my phone from the stream. Ah! I am a tech genius. Um, thank you, Dan. So, uh, as, as you can see, uh, my, my cocktail is more orange than what <laughs> Dan made. Uh, but it'll work just the same. I cannot control the, the, the level of orange the peach. in a peach. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll start by sketching out this glass. And you'll notice that it's kind of like, um, it's one of those, uh, I would say it's a unique glass. Yeah. Uh, but it's basically like we have two parallel lines, but they're going kind of like, away. not okay, they're not parallel. Sorry. They're like two lines are going kind of like away from each other. Divergent. So, divergent. Mm. Oh, I forgot to talk about the the nice copito that I I had. I think I've talked about them before. Yeah. You should paint a copito. Copita. Copita. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about my, my poor use of Spanish. But yeah, the the traditional tasting glass for mezcal. Mm. Much better. All right, so I got with two lines, and then at the bottom here, I'm going to connect it with a curve, and then at the top, I'm going to sketch like a very narrow type of oval shape. And then we got the stem, and that's two lines that kind of like point outwards, like this. And then we'll have another oval shape here for the, the base. As I like to say, um, you know, no matter what you're sketching or painting, try to like just see what, what the object that you're looking at and break it down into like simpler shapes. Um, I find that uh, makes it more approachable to like, paint the subject. You just start with like small parts and then kind of build. Um, you'll have your final, final watercolor sketch. All right, so I've got, um, I got the base here and then now I'm going to do, draw the peach slice. And the way that I, I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm kind of like sketching like a half oval shape. And then it's gonna kind of slow, kind of curve upwards a little bit, and then dip down just a touch. And then this last part here is kind of like more of a flat line. So that's like the general like kind of shape. And then we're gonna do another curve line at the bottom to show the the skin of the peach or the rind. like this and now i'm gonna erase a few of these extra lines that i have david says small parts connected great tip yeah kind thank like you eating eating the elephant one bite at a time yes All right, so we have our, our peach shape. 
again, it's just a series of like two like curved lines and then you have a rounder, rounder part here that kind of dips down a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to add one more oval shape kind of a little bit below here just to show like the, the surface part of the cocktail that you can see from this angle. And our sketch is ready to paint. So now for the fun part, I am using a watercolor brush pen. It's already pre-filled with water, which is really convenient. And let's see, I'm going to start with the peach. Uh, I'm, for, for the actual peach, the, like the inside part, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. So I'm just painting that directly inside of the shape here. And now while this area is still a little wet, I'm going to clean out the brush and add just a touch of this like yellow orange. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of drop in just a little bit, just so that it's not like fully just yellow, but it's got a little bit, a touch of orange in here. And then here at the very top, I want to add um, just like a little bit of like a, a deeper or like a reddish orange. So I'm just doing a couple of like little lines here. And you'll notice that once you do that, so the colors is gonna, they're gonna start to bleed into each other. And that's totally okay. Like this is part of like a peach slice kind of looks like that, you know, has those like um, kind of like nice transitions of colors. So um, I just encourage you to like try it out because it's so fun to see how these colors kind of play with each other. Volta, you got a question, which pin do you brush pen do you use? Oh, uh, great question. Thank you. I use a Pentel brush pen. Um, any, any type of brand will really work and you can find them at Michael's or your local craft store or like Amazon. Um, I, I prefer these, uh, from the ones that I've used over the years, um, just because they seem to be a little bit more sturdier. So, but really, I, I'm not trying to like all the brands out there. I just know they're a lot more common now. So definitely like get yourself some because these are great to like paint on location. If you're out having brunch, painting a cocktail, like, you can just pack some of these bad boys and like start painting. Didn't you used to have some type of brush pen and palette collection on your site? I don't know if you still do that. Oh, like uh, my favorite supplies? Yeah. I do, yeah. So if anyone is interested, I usually include a link to that in in the event. Um, if I haven't done this, please let me know and I will share. <laughs> yeah, I do have a guide of my favorite watercolor supplies, um, just of the ones that I've used over the years. Happy to share that with anyone who's interested. Yes, and I believe there's some affiliate links on there, so it's a nice way if you want to purchase it and contribute to Color Snack. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so now I'm painting the uh, the rind of of the peach, and I'm using a little bit of orange, but I also want to mix in like um, a little bit of magenta into the orange, so that it has that nice kind of pinkish, reddish, orange color. And I'm just gonna use that to paint this area here. All right. So we got our slice here. Um, and I, I tried to leave uh, like a little bit of a unpainted like blank space here to show the, the glass rim. Um, as you can see, I got a little bit carried away, so it's <laughs> not super visible, but it, it is a nice touch when you can do that, when you remember to do that, because it kind of like helps you see that this peach is a little bit submerged in the glass and, um, you know, just like a little, 
a little thing or two you can it's a, it's, it's a refraction of light from the rim of the glass it shows that it has a bevel a bevel yeah totally intentional yes absolutely <laughs> All right, so now for the actual drink, I am going to use some orange, Dan. So I'm going to use this orange color. <laughs> I can't control the peach. I know. You cannot control the peach. I know, I know. So this orange is kind of a little, a little too yellowy, so I'm going to add just a, a dash of magenta in here, and you'll see that it's starting to, like, spread out into the space. Well, I'm going to use that and... Help it kind of travel throughout this shape. And as per usual, my light source is on the left hand side. Yours doesn't have to be. Uh, but I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to add a highlight. So I'm pressing down, lifting off, and cleaning. Pressing down, lifting off, pressing down. So I want to make sure that there's like a nice kind of highlight on the side, <laughs> changing the color. Uh, and then here at the top, I'm going to add a little bit of orange here so you can see the drink. All right. And um, as you know, as I like to say, watercolors uh, dry a little bit lighter than what you see when they're wet. So if you're not super happy with how it looks, uh, feel free to kind of like let it dry and then do another layer of the color on top because it'll make it like that much more vibrant. And let's see, since I have a highlight on this side on the on the glass, I also want to add just a tiny highlight on the peach itself, itself right here, the slice. I'm going to lift off just a tiny highlight here, just so that like it matches. Uh, and then this area has dried, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and paint a few little little brush strokes here. There, are you happy now? Oh, Dan fixed the color. I don't know. Can they can they see it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Didn't want to hear you complain about Oh, this. yeah. Thank you for fixing the color. Um, yes, I did a, I did a very, uh, very difficult technique, expert level technique called uh, food coloring. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, <laughs> now it definitely matches the, the watercolor illustration. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> so when in doubt, use food coloring. All right, so now final part is uh, using, I'm going to use a little bit of this blue to paint the glass itself. So just going to do a couple of brush strokes here, outline the base. Now I'm going to clean off the brush and I want to just soften Soften these lines with a clean brush pen. So that kind of helps give it a little bit of uh, dimension and some shading. And I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, I guess we could add a, a quick uh, cast shadow. So I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to paint that on the opposite. So the light source is coming from this direction. The cast shadow is going to be on the opposite side. So it's going to kind of start here at the bottom and just come off to the side just a little bit. Again, I'm going to clean off my brush and soften, soften these lines just so that it looks more diffused like a real a real shadow. So this is another uh, little touch that you can do very quick technique, but it'll instantly just like make your illustration pop off the page. So um, yeah, I, it's, I think it's fun to do. Very nice. Gives that depth. Yeah. All right. Well, I think um, 
Yeah. We have it. Yeah, I don't know if she's still on, but I just I, I noticed that Yolanda has a new uh, acronym, a new symbol, ARM, at the end of oh. her name. I'm, I haven't seen that before. I'm not yeah. familiar with that. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, there she is. Yolanda, what does ARM stand for? I see that on your LinkedIn profile. And thank you, David. It is a nice shadow. Oh, ah, thank you so Patricia. much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope I hope you give this cocktail a try. Um, definitely have some peaches because they're good and delicious. Oh, um, yeah. Thank you. Associate in Risk Management. Ooh, that's a cool one. All right, I'll have to look up that title. Risk Management is very difficult. Yeah, wow. Uh, I've been involved in the past, like, two months, even though I'm in data science, I've been doing a lot of, like, data governance recommendations on how you can actually get data science to not make stupid mistakes. Mm -hmm. so, That's yeah. very important. The two go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if, you're, if your data is bad, data scientists tend to make dumb assumptions off of it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So a very important job. Yes. To manage that risk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, risk can be anything. I'm just thinking of my yeah. own little world, my own bubble of risk. There's lots of other ones. So it's good that there's people like Yolanda out there exactly. managing it. Yes. Because we don't think the yeah. unknown unknowns. That's where problems come from. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. This is interesting to me, yeah, Volta. Yeah, no, I know. I can see your face like, I'm hungry. It's 7.30. I am hungry. I don't care <laughs> about business. I do care. I do care. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. I'm really excited about next week's episode. Uh, I found a way to make a snow cone at home and it's going to blow your mind. I mean, it's so easy. Like your cat can do it. It's that easy. So definitely tune in next week. Um, otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I hope you've got some, some peaches in the near future. Yes. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.